Good afternoon everybody. Um, lovely day here, ideal for shooting YouTube videos. Recently some of you may have watched my other earlier video where I explained the differences between automotive, marine, marinized and industrial engines. I just wanted on this occasion to focus in on this particular proper marine original Gardner 3LW and I want to pay particular attention to the reciprocating water pump. See, this engine has got all the classical components of a proper marine engine, the oil cooler, reciprocating pump, um, extended crankshaft, uh, cast iron um, crankcase. And as you can see, um, it's not in bad condition at all. If there was an alloy crankcase, it'd be much more uh, corroded. Now, the governor on this engine needs a little bit of work, so lazy me, I've just disconnected the rack here and we can control the rack ourselves by hand. The pump is driven by a reciprocating shaft here coming off the camshaft on the engine. The pump, in effect, reduces the pressure inside the oil cooler. So water is sucked in here through this port here, along the oil cooler, right along the oil cooler and out through this port here up through that pipe down through the pipe and back into the pump but i've taken that pipe off just to make life a bit easier and i've connected on this simple um uh, silicon hose here okay so we'd very much like to start this engine now but because this is a reciprocating pump here um and the engine hasn't been started, I, I think, for quite a few years, uh, the plunger inside is going to be dry. And I'm worried that if we just start her up without any preparation, uh, we could damage the, the pump. So I had to think of some way of preparing the engine beforehand. So the first thing I did was I just took an ordinary garden hose. I put it on here like that. And I forced water right the way up through the system until it was coming out here quite happily through this um, exit here. Okay, so we're just a, just about to start her. Before we do that, um, I will turn on the tap. I will keep this connected here. I will force it down into the water so that the engine is getting cooling from the garden hose and from the basin. And then I will take away the garden hose and see does she continue to suck. Okay, there's a good danger I'm going to get wet here. <laughs> So I promise not to laugh too much. I'm going to force water up. Sorry. Force water up through the hose. You can see it coming out there. Okay, off we go. got a problem blow by um, we know the injector is firing okay so that's most likely um, stuck rings or worn bores or whatever but I'm not terribly concerned about that at the minute because that's not my objective my objective is simply to talk about the the reciprocating water pump in this instance we'll do another video sometime in the future to address that problem but let's get back to the pump itself um, as I explained there's a reciprocating piston which travels in and out inside that chamber that you can see there. If we look at the overall picture of the pump, you can see that the water comes in from that lower pipe and goes out at the upper pipe. The lower pipe is normally connected to the oil cooler, but I've disconnected that just for the simplicity of this video. Uh, there's two valves. Uh, an input valve at the bottom and an output valve at the top. And here you can see uh, what the output valve itself looks like. It's very simple. It's just a simple flat rubber diaphragm which is stiffened and held in place by that round disc that you can see there. There's a number of widgets on the outside of the pump. We've got um, a high pressure release valve and this is really important because 
on oil pumps at least gardener oil pumps i can see have i have I've experienced i have experienced the pressure growing so high that it has actually burst the pressure gauge so it's important that there's some kind of safety release there and that's what that pressure release valve does there's also a drain point there where you can drain the output chamber and there's a sniff a sniffler valve now the sniffler valve is really quite important because it allows air under certain circumstances to enter the pump and air is very important here because water is incompressible if there's no air in the system the water will not compress it will not allow the valves to lift or operate so that's why a certain amount of air is important um, it's so important that Gardner actually featured this rather beautiful brass plate um, on the reciprocating pump and you can see what it actually says here um, here we've got a parts list an exploded diagram of the pump in a parts list and that should make everything quite clear so as you can see we do have issues with this engine but i don't think they're serious we'll dismantle her now completely and restore the whole thing um, i look forward to that